Hello, my name is Patricia Rollinson and this is my French Fleur tissue box cover. Um, it's got a really kind of beachy, um, shabby chic look. And the neat thing about this is, is this was done completely with stencils. So it's quick, it's fast, it's easy, and anyone can do it and have success. So you can paint roses and I've really sanded through these and whitewashed over them to make them look just really faded and beachy. So um, I think that you're going to find some interesting interesting tidbits in this lesson. Enjoy. All right, so we're going to take our insert for our tissue box and we're going to base it with some burnt umber. And what I'm wanting to do is just do a layering, um, distressing, antiquing kind of technique. So to try to keep the paint off the tabs. Um, you can go down to the tab. You might have to sand it if you get too much on there. A little bit is okay. So if your um, piece needs to be tightened up, then you add a little bit more. Um, if you think it's too tight, then you can just sand it off just a little bit. So just get a coat on there and let it dry. Okay, now I'm going to put some weathered wood here and there. I don't want it everywhere because I don't want cracks everywhere. And you want it nice and thin. So keep your fingers out of it. And you can force blow dry this. Um, it can be perfectly bone dry um, when you're going to apply paint over the top. And it can be bone dry for a year or more, so that doesn't matter either. All right, I've got Spa Blue, Mint Julep Green, and Bleach Sand and White. And what I want you to do is make a mix of this that makes you happy. Um, I'm using kind of a combination of all of them. I don't like how blue that is. I don't like how green that is, so I'm just kind of playing with it until I do like it. And a lot of times that's just what you got to do is just play. So if I was guessing and giving a recipe, I would say that it's one part spa blue, one part warm white with a touch of mint julep and a touch of bleach sand. I just want that color to lean backwards just a little bit and yellow up just a touch so that it goes with my base colors and maybe a touch more green. Touch more green. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is apply this to my piece here. Now what you want to do is a little bit of thick and thin um, application and I'm laying my brush down so that I don't pull away from my crackle. So we want some thick and then some thin and then get the heck out of there once you get going. Otherwise you'll lift and pull and mess up your crackle. Try to work in some sort of um, cohesive manner. that tab. Okay. And now I just watch the magic happen. It's already crackling. All right, so now we've got this dry. We're going to go ahead and apply some of our bleach sand and antique white kind of mixed, brush mixed. And you want to slip slap this every old which way because we don't want the cracks going in one direction. So we want them to be kind of a hazed crack. Stay out of it once you get the paint down. <clears throat> if you have any fixing to do, you can fix it later. If you touch it before it dries, then it all chips off. And it's not pretty. Try to get enough on there so that it is covered. Yeah, see what I just did there? A little bit of schmutz right there. Okay, now I'm going to go at this with some really heavy grit sandpaper. You want to make sure that you are dry. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit soft in a couple areas. Um, but I'm going to take this in the other room where I've got a sanding table and kind of dig at it. Okay, so I've got my sanding done there. 
Now I'm going to take another brush. I'm going to do a little bit more crackle here and there, just a little bit. So I have some layers of crackles. Get that dry. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my blue mix, which I'm almost out of, and I'm gonna apply it just a little bit differently. And actually, maybe I'll mix it just a little bit wider. Okay, so now what I want to do is just kind of splotch it on here and there. And see what happens. All right, and this is where I'm at. And now I'm going to go give it another sand and we'll be ready to paint. All right, I'm going to put my floor word on there. And I think I want to use bleach sand and a little bit of warm white. So I'm going to go in with the bleach sand and I'm going to rub it off on the paper towel. And just line that word up, make sure that your stencil feels like it's straight and centered. And you can tape it down if you want to. And then I'll just do a little rubbing technique. The key to stenciling really nicely is to do this step over here. Always wipe off your excess because then you won't get the bleeding under and you won't get big globby stuff and you're going to like it better. Much easier to control. I love stencils for letters because they do so perfect. Okay, so you can barely see that, which is where I thought I'd probably need the white. Neutralize that, get some more go for a little bit stronger effect. Take a look. Okay, now we can see it much nicer. Okay, if you don't like the bridging um, not connected, then you can go ahead and connect it. it this one doesn't bother me, so I'm going to leave it alone. And then we need to add some drop shading. Okay, we're going to add some drop shading with a slate gray. And we've thinned it, or I've thinned it, with a little bit of water. And I tend to go always to the um, left side and to the bottoms of letters. So you keep it all on the same sides. It just looks really good. That a terrible sound of silence. Crickets, right? <clears throat> see how that just makes the lettering come out just a little bit more. Don't do really long strokes, just do them kind of short so that you don't have unsteadiness. I'm going to go underneath and finish up inside our flourish. Get this side if we need it a little bit stronger. Okay, I think that's going to work. Okay, the neat thing about our roses is that all of the steps are on. Let's put it the right way. Um, this is your base layer, and then you've got layer one, two, three, four, that kind of thing. Um, so. What you're going to do is you're going to position it so that your upside right is upside right if you want it to angle a little bit. Get a little stencil brush and I've mixed terra coral and pink chiffon to pink chiffon to one terra coral. 
Apparently today is I'm not satisfied with any color of paint day. I'll just fill that in. And there's a worksheet that comes with this and it shows you where to put the colors as we get going. So you want to make sure that you have your worksheet. And the outline of this piece is um, etched on the plastic so that you can lay it, um, you can figure out how to um, position this. Okay. So then I want to do a little rose. And let's see, we'll go ahead and just point that one up. There we go. All right, so now we're going to go into Terra Coral. And I'm going to use just a small stenciling brush. And using my map, I'm going to apply the colors. This gets shaded down here. And then this gets shaded down here. And this gets shaded over here. And I'm going to need another tiny one for the little ones. Use some warm white. And then I'll go at the tops. Increase the darkness right while I'm here. The neat thing about this is you can put this right back over the top and do that anytime. Okay, step one. I'll go out here. Up right. All right, so now we're going to have our light to the outside here. This one goes to the outside as well. I love this idea that you can have a stenciled rose and everybody can paint a rose. So you can have classes where, you know, all the, the people that are comfortable doing stroke roses can do those, but if you don't want to do them, you just get you a stencil and Bob's your uncle. Okay, so making progress. Next step. way off here. <laughs> okay. Nice and highlighty out here. Whoops, 
too strong. You can always go into your base color if you screw something up. Look at how that's coming together, huh? All right, last step. Now we'll bring our highlight up through the middle of these petals because they're kind of bent a little bit. Base coat it white, huh? I'm just reinforcing the white. It's easy to lose your highlights um, when you're painting in just three colors. So there's our first rose. Isn't that amazing? So now you can go back over it and you can decide if you think something needs to be reinforced. Um, I think I could use just a little bit more dark up here. So I'll get it lined up and go back and bring this dark out just a little bit. And maybe add a little bit more white on the edges. Yeah, there. That frames that just a little bit better. And maybe this little guy right here needs a little bit more. Oh, it would be helpful if I didn't cant this. But that's okay, though. That's the white. Okay, and because they're supposed to be nice and soft, um, we're not going to worry about um, about really making them be bold. And I plan on sanding through these as well. I'm going to use this cute little scroll stencil and some white. And I'm going to add just a little bit of detail on our sides. I love that this comes apart and it's so easy to put together and you can paint it flat. Oh my goodness. In the days when everything was glued and nailed together, it was a drag to paint multi-sided things. Okay, let's make a little peek. Okay, it's just got just a little bit of detail. I think that's okay. What I'm trying to do is keep this kind of neutral enough so that um, it does not feel um, so that you can change the panels out but not feel like you have to do it French country. So I want it kind of feminine but not too Frenchy Frenchy. Maybe you could put in a, a Christmas thing or a winter thing or something like that but maybe on the elegant side. Side. 
So I'm kind of alternating, but since there's three, I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but I'm sure it'll look fine. Notice I'm wiping off and just scumbling instead of stippling. That'll make a much softer um, look. Okay. And then we could go in um, in our colors here. Hang on, I gotta grab another color. Okay, I grabbed a little bit of driftwood and I thinned it with some water. I'm just gonna do drop shading on these details. And then I'll give it just a little bit more depth. See how that's just making it look a little bit like um, Oh, there's a name. Can't think of it. You just kind of loosely do it. You don't have to be too precise. If you've got something you can't tell is there, then just ignore it. And this is going to get sanded as well, so... Yeah, I think that gives it a nice, jazzier look than just the white. Okay, now I'm going to take all the pieces and go sand them. All right, we're going to do a leaf. We've got a little leaf stencil. And we're going to use some light avocado. And we're going to do it very sheer. If I make a mess out of my pink, I can always go back and... Um, okay, so I'm going to get... I can always go back and just redo my details over the top. So I'll go into soft sage, evergreen, and light avocado. Let's see what kind of a. I need to tuck in just a little bit right in here and bring it around. And that just gives us a little bit of framing green. And I'll repeat with other shapes on the other roses. All right, I'm going to use this great big jumbo duster stippler. And then I'm just going to go over the project lightly and wiping it off. Just want to give it a faded, more old look. Like it's just old papers. Alright, I've got the Deco Art Media Acrylic um, Antiquing Creams. So I've got the Titanium White, the Raw Umber, and the Patina Green. And what I want to do is just streak just a little bit of color here and there, and I'm going to wipe that back. Okay, we'll go into the white. And just kind of patina it around. the brown. Oops, I had the white. Go into the brown with a clean spot. Less of the blue, I think. Okay, now we've got some distressed stuff going on there. I think just a little bit of the blue up top.
You can wipe this back if you don't like the look. Okay, and I'm just going to keep checking it out with the project. I like bringing in these three colors because I think it's making this all kind of merry together. And we can go on here, probably not with any more teal, but we can go on here with some white. Streak it through things. Don't want to erase our letters too much or you won't be able to tell that they, they're there. A little bit of the brown. I have to go back and put my letters back in. Wipe them out just a little bit. Okay. How's that for just like every kind, every kind of layer? Okay, so we know we want just a little bit of this teal color, so we'll mix it with a little white going in. go into charcoal gray and we're going to thin the paint with water take a heavy handled something or another test it out we're gonna do some spattering always always pound off the excess on your surface something distressful to our base as well. I forgot about the base. And then maybe we can go with a little bit of the white as well. computer. Okay. Okay, we've got these awesome little sponges that are super duper dense. I'm going to trim my piece with the um, burnished brass DecoArt metallic luster. So what I'm going to do is I thinned it with water and I'm going to load it flat on my brush or my sponge. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put even pressure and kind of trim my edges all the way around. Make sure that you load even and even pressure. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more of the bleach sand. Let's get some paper towels over here. To our top. I'm going to put some feet on this puppy, I think. And we'll just streak in a little brightness. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and do that to all the different pieces as well and maybe even just a touch of white. A little bleach sand, a little bit of our... Trying not to cover up everything I've done, but I can always repaint. And so let's see how that brightens that up just a touch. 